Good day. Today we're going to be looking at how to create auxiliary views and section views and from a model that we're creating. So I started this model and what we're going to do is we're going to add a uh, hole and some other features that we're going to, going to then create a section view and an auxiliary view on a drawing sheet. So stay tuned as we uh, get started here. Uh, first off, I'm going to go ahead and put a sketch plane on it. And one of the nice things now is that you can see that the triangle pops up to find the midpoint when you're looking at trying to create a midpoint line or location. And so I'm going to take that line, right mouse click, and make it a construction line. So that way it doesn't get used. So I'm going to create a circle uh, again at the midpoint. And We'll create a, we can offset that circle slightly. And we'll do this as a negative negative point two five. Perfect. And then we'll finish this sketch and extrude this out slightly. And we can bring it out 0.875. All right, so we're going to then drill a hole here in the middle. So we'll use the hole command. We'll find that surface, and that's the center. We'll pick the edge of the circle. That will automatically put it into um, the center of that location. So that's the nice thing, is that it automatically centers it once you pick that edge. And the diameter of the hole, right now it's a sixteenth of an inch, um, yeah, 1.5 looks good. And we're just going to send this all the way through the object. So it's going to go all the way through the object here. Okay. Perfect. And so we picked the references. We'll go through the object, we'll choose OK, boom. And so now we've got a hole through the object. On the side of this object, I'm going to go ahead and create, actually on the back, I think. Yeah, we'll do it on the back. So on the back of the object, what we're going to do is we're going to create a little slot here. And so we'll just create a rectangle, put a couple of dimensions in here to locate its edges. One inch and one inch and the depth will set at uh, point five and that's it. And we'll extrude this and put this into a three D view. We actually want to pull it through. And it doesn't really matter what the distance is, but we could also just choose and say we want to go all the way through the object in that direction. And we'll choose OK. So now we've got some fairly complex geometry down here where that hole and the slot meet. And so it actually would be good to do a section view through the middle and then an auxiliary view to dimension the hole properly. So at this point, the first thing we need to do is save our work, and then we'll get started in on the drawing sheet. And so, file save as, and this is going to be uh, section aux demo. And choose save. Perfect. And so, from here, we're going to end up having to create a drawing sheet, so we're going to go into the drawing. From design. Now the difference is if you're going to go from design, it allows you to create specific views. If you go from animation, that allows you to create um, like exploded uh, geometry or uh, assembled. Uh, but that's primarily for for exploded assemblies. Is from animation. Okay, so you go from the design to the drawing. From design pops up a dialog box here in the right hand side. It says create drawing. It's going to be of the full assembly. Okay, 
Uh, the drawing is going to be a great view. It gives us the ability to change the sheet size, which is a B-size sheet. This is a pretty small object. We could actually get away with A, but since we're going to do multiple views, we'll do a B-size sheet. And ASME is the drawing standards. That's Y.14.5 that it's going to be based on. All right, we'll choose OK. And it'll create a drawing sheet for us. Along with that, it allows us to pick our base view. In this case, this is the front view of the object. And this comes from the actual uh, design view. Now, it starts it out as a 1 to 2, and we can change it to 1 to 1. So we could actually do this as a 1 to 1. We do have enough room. Um, however, since this is going to be the section view, the front view is going to be the section, what I may do is come over here and choose right side view and use that as my initial basis or the top view and that may work really well too but again remember the L-shaped pattern for orthographics since I'm going to be doing the section view um, we're going to go ahead and set this up as a top view selection one to two one you know one half scale uh, will allow us more views and more uh, room. It would fit with a one-to-one, -one, but if we were to put in dimensions, it would be too tight. All right, so there's our top view. And it allows us to, to, to set up some settings, but again, don't worry about this because you can always go back and edit these. We'll choose OK. So that's our view itself. And from here, we have the ability to choose different views. We can project views. We can do a section view, uh, and uh, from there we can also do auxiliary views. And for example, there's uh, the ability to, to pick a section view. The projected view will allow us to do that. So let's do a section view. We're going to go ahead and pick the parent view. And then it wants us to select the cutting plane. And so the cutting plane is like when you're actually cutting through an object, you always draw a line before you saw it in half. So you know exactly where to where that line of cut is. Well, that's what we're doing right now, is we're drawing that line on the object. So we start in the middle of the object, like right here. I'm going to start my first point off the object. And that's really important that the first point is actually horizontal, in this case, off the object. We'll then pull it straight across all the way through the object and stop outside the other side of the object. And when we're finished, we're going to right mouse click and choose continue. Now the view is projecting. So if we project it up, notice the arrows direct in one direction. If we project it down, the arrows direct in another direction. So now we're going to project it as our front view. We select the location. Over here on the right hand side, we've got the drawing view dialog that, it, that tells us what's going to happen here. Okay, so we're going to see visible edges, we're not going to shade it, the tangent edges will be there, any threads will show up, and we'll choose OK. And so you can see that the section view is pretty unique. So we've actually cut the object in half. Any place where the blade would touch the object has what are known as section lines. And these are drawn at typically 45 degrees, 30 degrees, or 60 degrees based on the object. Typically they'll default to 45 degrees. If it doesn't work, we can always go in and edit these particular section lines. And so if we wanted to change the angle of the section lines, we'd have to edit the view. And then we should be able to go in and edit the section lines themselves to a different direction. And so those are different things that that we should be able to do as part of a design environment. If we project from a section view, we will get a section view projection. So uh, there are some tricks when you're developing views uh, for drawing sheets like this. For example, I will actually create another base view off the edge of the object, okay, out here on the sheet as a base view. I'll then use the projected view from here to create the three-dimensional view in the corner. 
If I were to project the section view, it would cut the object in half. Looking very cool, however, not, not uh, specifically accurate for our drawing environment. So then, this particular view, we could go in and edit and choose to shade the object. And so now that that 3D view is shaded, that can remain. We'll also need to do a projection for an auxiliary view. And so we'll get to that here in just a second. Since there are no auxiliary views as an option under drawing views, there are two ways that we can make this happen. Number one, we could use uh, a base view or number two, we can use the auxiliary view, and excuse me, we can use the section view and kind of fake it out. So there's two methods, and I'll show you both here uh, on how to accomplish that. So the first method is we go actually go back to the model design and select the angled surface. And then we right mouse click it and we want to look at that particular face. And so what we want to do is view that face and then create it as a named view. And so the look at tool is in here at the bottom. And so what we did is instead of right mouse clicking, because look at is not on the list, so we're going to go ahead and choose the look at here on the bottom and look at that particular face. We can now save that as a named view. So we right mouse click on named views and choose new name view and we can put auxiliary. So we'll put AUX. So now that's a named view. We can now go back to our drawing sheet. In our drawing sheet, we can do a new base view. And one of the named views should show up as auxiliary. You know what? I forgot to save it. Got to save it for it to show up. So let's hit saved. Just say it's a user saved. And now, let's see if a new base view auxiliary shows up. Oh, create view representation. Orientation for Okay. So there was one little item that popped up, and so you don't catch it very often, but it's something you need to, to watch out for. As you saw, I was checking to create a base view and change the orientation, and it's not there. I'm thinking, well, why isn't the auxiliary view not there? Well, there's this little thing that's up on the top row here, this little diamond that says that the reference has been updated. And so I, you know, when I created the additional view in the drawing and saved it in the model environment, and then I come over here in the drawing, I have to choose the update. And if I don't choose the update, it won't show up. So now that I've updated it, I pick base view, and auxiliary is now one of the options. And so that's an auxiliary view of the object. So I can now put that auxiliary view in place. I can then add the text that it is an auxiliary view move this text around so it's a little bit more appropriate. But now that circle is in true size, which is the goal. The other way to do it is with the section view. And to do it with the section view, it's, it's kind of snazzy. So the easiest way is to do it with this view command and then hit the update in the top. The second way to do it is with the section view. And so if you pick section view, 
and you pick this and I'll just pick this view because it's easiest to work with right now or I could pick this view I will pick this view what I need to do is I need to pick the auxiliary angle and so the angle that I want to work with is actually right here but it's not on the object notice that it's not sectioning the object and so we can change that and, and we throw a section in there and so what I can do is I can move this off and notice what happens is that I can expand it so it shows more of the features and then I can always edit this particular view now the good thing is is that if this was the front view I could actually get an accurately placed section view because this one is going to be vertical and it's not going to be rotated to the angle of that section view. Now I could use the rotation tool and rotate it based on the alignment of the section. So there are some advantages, but the easiest, but a second easy way to do the auxiliary view is to actually just create a new section view, move the section cutting plane line off the object, okay, and then once it's off the object you can actually edit this text and make it all uh, view BB or auxiliary view BB that kind of thing um, but then you can actually see the representation behind it so that is how you can create auxiliary views and section views in a drawing sheet have a great day we'll talk to you soon bye now